Hey there, Father Michael here. The creating, creative God of the universe, the one that we call Creator or Abba or Father, Mother, that God, that one power, that one presence, is always inviting us to listen to that divine voice within, that still speaking voice in every human heart. As we join our own creativity and our own efforts to that ever evolving, ever expanding creative work of God that began 14 billion years ago with the Big Bang. In the Hebrew Scriptures, the book of Genesis, there are two different creation stories, chapters 1 and 2, written respectively by the priestly author and the Yahwist author. We've seen this now for a generation or so. We have two very different accounts. But in the first chapter, the one more people are familiar with, the boss God, the God uh, who reveals himself to Moses uh, as Yahweh, that God, the one who controls and orders all the other gods in the heavens, yes, there are more than one of them in the Hebrew understanding, because God says, let us make humans in our image, meaning the gods, the, the whole pantheon of gods. And additionally, that God, after the creative work uh, gets some things accomplished, that God declares that what is being created is good. Not perfect, mind you, but good. Why is that? The answer seems clear. Creation isn't finished yet. It is still evolving. It is still in the process of becoming the next best version of itself, like you and me. Creation, all of creation, everything in the universe is still replete with limitations and imperfections and accidents happen. Tragedies, misconceptions, birth defects, old age, death. In other words, even though the God of Genesis 1 says, let there be light, the reality is that the light has not conquered the darkness to the point that everybody can see it. The separation of dry land from the waters has not at all eradicated the chaos waters of, of pre-creation to home in Hebrew. So what is missing? What is needed in this ongoing search on God's part for perfection, for the fulfillment of creation? Well, what's missing? Human involvement, human cooperation with God's original creative idea. In the book of Exodus, in the Hebrew scriptures, Exodus 20, there is a, a powerful reminder that the Israelites are not to make any graven images, not of people, animals, nothing in creation can be um, can be typified or shown in any kind of creative endeavor. And yet, we know historically that that is not how humans are, and that is not how the Israelites behaved. They did, in fact, have certain images that they were perfectly fine with, which is why we Christians have images to this day. There are exceptions to that rule. We don't worship the images. That's the deal. 
Moses himself, the greatest prophet uh, of Judaism, orders the creation of a bronze serpent to be lifted up on a pole so that the people will be healed who've been bitten by poisonous snakes. So too, just a few chapters after that, you know, blatant condemnation of images in Exodus 20, we've got instructions in Exodus 26 of how the Israelites are to construct the tabernacle uh, so that God's presence might dwell there. And it says this, Exodus 26, verse 1, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine twisted linen, blue, purple, and crimson yarn. And you will make them with images of the cherubim, skillfully worked into them. The ironic part is, of course, weaving in the images the Ark of the Covenant itself has two significant images on top. But the part that really is relevant to us, to you and to me, I think, is that directive from God that artists do their work skillfully. To me, that means that as you and I engage in this creative cooperation uh, and co-creation with God, we are supposed to, expected to, needed to use our own creativity, add our own thoughtful designs and ideas and projects and all of that. In other words, the work of creation continues, continues by God's design and it requires a creative alliance between humanity and God. So that, I think, is how we resolve that inherent imperfection in our world. This is how we open ourselves to our own creativity. This is why we do it. Our creativity has its origin in the creating God. And this ongoing work of ours, of opening ourselves, is absolutely essential to God's restorative actions in our universe. Joining all of this to that omega point, as Teilhard de Chardin says, that omega point that is found in the living cosmic Christ. Now, to be clear, I know when I say creative, some of you left-brainers are having uh, a little bit of a, a speed bump uh, in the thought process here. To be clear, using our creativity does not always mean it's a right brain kind of a thing. Creativity is the way that we engage in any endeavor that brings us joy and connection and beauty and order. Those things that we engage in that connect us to our better self. So this could be, you know, making a mosaic. Absolutely. But it could also be working on the intricacies of string theory. It could be writing a piece of music or performing a piece of music, or it could be tuning up an engine on a 73 Ford Mustang Fastback. Could be putting down some beats on a mixtape. It could be cooking a holiday meal for someone that we care about. However it is that we choose to engage with our creative selves, we know for sure that we are assisting God in making more room for love, more room for grace, more room for wholeness in our lives and in the lives of others that we touch. 
this whole evolving universe is in process as we sit here and by doing our best creative work we are hastening the culmination of God's dream for us God's evolutionary plan making all things new in Christ. Let's pray. Father, Mother, God, creator of all that is and of all that is yet to be, we open our hearts this morning confident that your inspiration and your still speaking voice within us will guide us to do the next right thing. Help us today to surrender ourselves more fully to your divine project of bringing order and peace and harmony to this world. Help us during this holiday season to be ever grateful for the many gifts you have given us and let us perhaps entertain the idea of the many ways we could be the answer to someone else's prayer. Help us, inspire us, guide us as we willingly engage in the work of your dream of making all things new. Amen.